Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a very warm welcome to the first Art Basel Conversations on site here at the Convention Center. It's a very great honor uh, this morning to welcome two giants of the Chinese contemporary art scene, Zhang Xiaogang, uh, an artist who really needs no introduction. His works have really become icons of uh, Chinese contemporary art around the world and instantly recognizable. Leng Lin is, uh, as you know, the director of PACE Beijing, but also the director of uh, Beijing Commune that has been running since 2004. He has really been pioneering uh, in terms of introdu introducing best practice amongst galleries uh, in China. The, this is the first of a series of uh, conversations that are based on the relationship between the artist and the gallerist. It's a very important relationship uh, that is one that is uh, often, I think, under-recognized. Galleries really play a very important role, not only in selling the work of an artist, but also in helping to build their career for the long term, helping to nurture it and to uh, helping with, for example, um, producing work, paying for the production of work for uh, non-commercial institutional shows, etc. And so it's a very important uh, role that gallerists have to play. I'd like to thank Absolute Art Bureau for their, uh, for their support as presenting partner for uh, Art Basel Conversations. And I very much hope you enjoy the talk this morning. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Sorry about it. I had a little accident, so I lost my voice. So you can see, as you heard me, I totally lost my voice. So so today, I'm really pleased to be here to enjoy and uh, discussions and our conversations this after. So, so we're talking about the Chinese traditional modern arts and we exchange the discussions. So according to my past experience, so we started, no one has been interested in modern arts whatsoever. So we're starting from scratch is nothing. Nobody knows about arts and whatsoever. So today, when we come up to today, is one of the most important to sharing the changes by time by time uh, from the past to now about the Chinese art. Uh, like the Jiang Xiaogang artist, uh, ever since the revolution started, uh, about 1997, and until today, is one of the most activist artists in China. So I, I can actually say it's not much artists right now in China is active as, as like a Zhang Xiaogang since ever uh, revolutions. So coming up to today is a one of the um, big privilege to announce and share Zhang Xiaogang's past experience from very complicated society to the how to manage these artists when the locals and the what they moving forward to global as a well-known artist. Mm. So not just that we expose lots of artists from lots of other channels, like uh, magazines to uh, any other uh, spokes or seminars through like this. So having up to today, we're coming here to expose lots of Chinese art. It's one of our main goal, and it's the most important to let lots outside the world globally to know what is a Chinese art about? What is our artists art about? How we promote our, our artists into the market? How to explore our artists to um, the historical or any modern art uh, to let global 
gallerists or collectors and the other uh, sectors to understanding more about the Chinese art. So for me, I'm very satisfied right now that how we end up today. So sometimes I think people is like that, they come and go. Sometimes that we very complicated, we're living in a world very controversy, and you can see the Chinese grow so fast, fast and rapidly. Like this rapid grow in China, sometimes we not really get used to it because they're fast growing, and we used to what we old-fashioned traditional way. When the market or anything since evolution, it goes very rapidly grow. Sometimes we can't even adapt it to it. So in the past in China, we're not really put on lots of detail in your lifestyle and um, where we goals about and where we motivations about. We're not really paying attention this to much detail because we're living where consistency, what we're uh, traditionally what Chinese are brought about. So now, as ever since the revolution in 1997, and Chinese are more reaching out globally, and we have a chance, actually, free talk. We can actually share our experience. Not just we memory, we stay in the memory and behind in China. For 80s, where people were talking about it, for 80s and Chinese art, so that's one of the most memorable time for myself. That time in the 80s when we learned in art at the academy, and compared to today, a totally different case. Let's say about my daughter. I sometimes I don't understand what she heading to or what she aimed to because the time the way we grew up it differently and mentality was completely differently. Maybe it's a cultural change so rapidly, sometimes for me, it's overwhelmed to take. In that time, what I do in the 80s, my parents, I always follow my parents' philosophy. My parents gave me a lot of impact. So learning art, it's almost a representative. It's a no job, no hope, nothing. It was no nobility it was talking about. So for us in the gateway to learn how to input in the art to become artists, we don't actually have a much input on it. And we don't even think about what future is going to bring us, where we're happy with it was, uh, we're create the what we like to create, but without a much input to giving it to us. So at that time, for me, was a look at the artist. It's not just the industry, one of the buying and sell input. So for us, it's a much more to learn, and we are, as an artist, it's nothing about know about the market and movement. We are create what we like to create. So when we actually learn the art, we don't have a much material to provide to us. Don't even talk about exhibition. We don't have that either. So for us to educate ourselves to improve our quality of the art is keep looking, learning, educating ourselves to inspect more life around you. We're taking into that, and we just create what, what we have in that time. So we don't actually actually looking at the colored th themes or story behind things like that. So it's a lots of art in that time. It's a depending on self to discover about the art and what they're gonna be create or where they want to reach. And they have to develop themselves without any support for exhibition or marketing or campaign or anything. 
So it's almost like for artists that age is like a people and people's relationship, and you are just not just artists. You're just like the same as other people, and living in the same day by day lifestyle as your neighborhood and the same thing. So that was actually 80s. So what we looking into. As the revolution started and the things are changing, but sometimes why we say that we're overwhelmed because the things are changing so rapidly and we just don't know how to intake. It is good for artists today for reaching out and they have a chance to finally opportunity to represent to the outside the global world. That's why for me, it put me a lots of impact because I finally, I'm, I'm, I am very proud, I'm very happy, and finally Chinese artists had a chance. And it is a beautiful thing. So I'm keeping mentioning about my past memory because there are lots of things in the past memory happen in good and bad. But most important is to finding yourself and where you want to go and what you want to create. And without the restriction, without the control, without the worry, without the courtesan. So now for us having chances of more having touched by the Western culture as well. That's why I said a modern arts right now, that lots of young artists in China is a much more freely to develop and to create their art piece. So from this young age generation, the way they learn from art academies, the way are us are a totally different way. But I do agree to West and East is you much input a lots of a cultural mix and match and is one of the most important. Unfortunately, we didn't have the chance in my time. So I see the goal is that we have a, we have a million, million of beautiful artists in China, but which is outside the world they're not well known about. For me, the rapidly changes sometimes overwhelm, as I mentioned, but for the young artists, it's much better how they adapted to it. I am so surprised, amazed by that. So for that, for Chinese art development, is one of the crucial and one of the most important uh, factor. Sometimes I do have a feel, the Chinese art, when they represent, is they want to represent something simple, but then in the behind, and the things are very complicated, and it's awkward because you want to create something easy in your mind, but then the life they're living in and the surrounded by all the environment is not actually created for that. So it's kind of a conflict or um, we couldn't say it's in a stop and way. The things what you want to push and the outcome, it may not be the same. So when I think about it, you know, things are not just possible, you're always pushing in your way direction. But it's a good thing how to intake, how to create, and how to resolve and each create of art that you want to be. You have all those elements together and then become a art. I think that this subject is quite interesting for artists and the gallerist. It's, it's, in China, we're talking about the old artists that had an old mentality. Well, we're talking about 80s artists that then people already input the mindset that, oh, the 80s artist is like that. 80s artists is a very conservative. 80s artists are um, very controlled in a certain circle. Let's talk, we're talking about the gallerist. Gallerists are most challenging part in, in 
China today. When the first time I was in the Academy of the Learning Art, one day I was going home, and then I saw the Chao Shanggang's artist. And then actually at that time, Zhang Xiaogang was uh, having an own personal individual tour around the nation. So by that time, I was uh, seeing the Zhang Xiaogang, there's a, pay, uh, a postcard, it was uh, selling for $5. And then within the picture or painting or postcard, whatever, I see the paintings, his art is a lot of challenges to um, Lots of a com conflict to lots of politics is sort of involved. It's a lot of like other mixture. But then, what's what to do with the product? And the people outside the world, they look at a painting, and that time in China, they don't actually enjoy or privilege the painting or artists. It's about it's about the money. It's about a market. If you're good and you pay for it, but you don't see the behind the scene about the understanding the artist itself. Sometimes, when you don't have ex when, when after the exhibition. To create the solo exhibition, it takes a lot of support and lots of money. But that time, we don't have a much artists that have the ability to do that. To buying a canvas and having a masterpiece and a couple of pieces is a very difficult time. So that time, it's not just about galleries. You see, to modern day today, the working artists, the galleries are very important. Galleries that actually support a lot of artists as well to create the better quality art. But that time, artists have to deal with everything together to promote to the exhibition because there are no such galleries behind them to support all the efforts and all the art world. <laughs> So, so for us having here today for conversations, and we can actually have a better support, knowing better artists here, and we can work with well and between uh, artists and the galleries. So we're talking about. In not just the galleries and also the creators and also lots about Kurt, uh, Kurdic about artists and one of the most important um, the discussions too. So we're talking about the galleries. It's not just because you want to be galleries that you become a gallerist. <laughs> The galleries is the inside. It's the most unique, essential our world relationship between the artist and the galleries. So, in China today, for the galleries, after the economy grow, so we able to actually have the support the artists, the consistency, and the provide them artists what they need. So they can truly enjoy the artist's world and create the piece what they like. So galleries is not just a buying and sell tools. For us, right now, we're educating lots of galleries in China, too. It's not about a buying and sell. It's about how to create the world and art world, the relationship between artists and galleries. And I think that that's the most crucial, important part. So our galleries is mainly for support artists to, to reaching out the global markets and global correct collector exhibition. So we're spending lots of time with the artists together 
so we become a more mutual relationship we can build out in between the relationship. I think I'm a probably is a wickest the artist. I'm not trying to be a humble, but I'm not really like to talk about it. I'm ve uh, I'm not. I, I'm probably said I'm a very inner person. I don't like to be high profile whatsoever. I just like to do my job. I like to do and be an artist. I want to create the beautiful thing. So because I'm involved with the lots of uh, contact with the art, cultural art, it's ever since the 98, I've been contacted with the uh, gallerist in China. But as an artist, I'm a one of the most traditional artists. So I realize, oh, I can't do it my own to explore the bigger world. I need the gallerist. I need to have a relationship. But I was a very picky to choose the gallerist. But then they always give me some requests. They ask me to paint this, paint that. But when I was young, you must have a own character. And you are not really agree with the gallery trying to ask you to paint and commercialize the paintings. And that's an empty shell for me. So I wish to find the gallery, gallery list which knows me, which is understand me, which is uh, supporting me where I want to go. That's why if I, ever since I get contacted with the gallerist, either good or bad, it's not they really talking about how they cooperate together. They always talk about um, what is the future for this artist? Is this artist going to be make it or not? And that was a mainly discussion. If I'm just going to be selling my painting, there's a two type. Either you want to just be commercialized, the painting artist, or you want to be true artist. So from, from my first start to contact the galleries, I wasn't sure where I'm going. And then I start to understanding what galleries are all about. So lots of galleries in the market right now is, is not very, at that time, is, it wasn't very professional. But ever since the revolution, then I start to realize Oh, there are lots of galleries that is changing the direction in another way, and I was a very interesting. And in, in order to develop to my own artist, my art, and where the galleries can support me as a person, as an artist, respect me as artist, it's not because they want me to paint whatever I want to paint. Now everybody here. That everybody knows about the galleries, what they do, and you know what's between the artists and the galleries too. But for my personal thing, the most of the things I care about, artists and the galleries' artwork relationship is. It's almost like a husband and wife. Because you can't divide them. One cannot be survived for each other. They are very um, bonded relationship. For artists art, for the job, it's not divided by nine to five type. So for artists to having their own creative, is they also need to the galleries to understand and the support. And I think that that's vice versa. 
So it's not about you choosing the best galleries. It's you choose what is suitable, what is uh, supported, what is uh, together you can create something as a team player. But well, let's talk about the galleries who just start up. And I think that's a good idea, too. There are lots of a new come up uh, galleries, too. So even though we're not just talking about the famous galleries, that, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean they can be suitable for the artist. So, so one time I told my friends I ha I'm confused. And that time was a market was a booming. And I said, do I actually need a gallerist representing me? So because a lot of our collector and they sometimes they don't actually go through the galleries. Sometimes they go around, they contact directly artists and they just purchase the art they want. But then, at the end of the day, the final conclusion is the artist doesn't need the gallerist because gallerist is not just the, and modern today, they're not just the buy and sell um, the work. They actually represent the artist to promote the artist and the artist's character, author's work. It's not just the in charge of the selling and buying. After I realized that point, then I started building more relationship with the gallerist. So now I'm kind of do lots of research in gallerist specialty. So, so in the Beijing, that old place is one of the most young galleries for me. So sometimes I like to talk in young generation and the young people and then talk about sharing what the exhibition is about. Take, uh, we're discussing about what they think, what I think. We'll put the, we'll put the uh, compromise together. Sometimes when we input the input together, then we've found some direction that we both agree. And I think that that's one of the most important. So having a good gallerist or bad gallerist, it doesn't matter. It's the most matter is how your mindset and can, can compromise and go in the same direction. But I think I am a very lucky guy. I've been contacted, I've been working with lots of our finest galleries. So today, so in the 1991, there, there's a one person who really gave me a huge support. And even though that a bad timing, he was there for me and the great support. I was contacted that particular person and I was very confused at that time and I don't know what to do. And the person gave me a lots of input and gave me a great shoulder support and where I become today. So when I first worked with the gallery, I don't know what I'm going to paint. So the gallerists didn't push me anything at all. But he instead showed me around Australia or other other area what is the gallery's comparison. So they really opened my insight. So get me a more inspiration to inspire to what I want to be instead of pushing me that what should I do. So it was a put me into lots of a mentor about the, my art, the where I want to go and where I want to reach. Because today, a lot of artists in the art world, they don't actually communicating well. So Mr. Zhang told me, I don't want to push you how many pain you have to paint. But when you're ready, when you want to express yourself, 
And then, as you are artist, you create what you want to create. So he's not just the gallerist, he was my mentor and he was my best friend because of his support. That's why I came out with the series. <laughs> so my inspire of a paintings, it's not because of people's input. It just, I'm inspired by lots of things around me and I start to create. And without the disagree from galleries or not, and they let me take my challenges into the work and they take the chance and the risk and gave me a great support. That's why I really want to appreciate that those galleries all behind me support me. So we're talking about the Pace of Beijing. From 82 till now, it's a one of the most galleries of is maintained as a good friends, as a good couple. So I am going to be in the in charge of the creative art, art piece of, about it, and then galleries that maintain the good relationship with the audience and promotion and marketing strategy. China went through a long way. Let's talk, let's see in the professional point of view. One gallerist is a one of a major point, and not just about uh, we're facing the creators, the critic, but in China. Let's talk about the uh, creative itself. It, it changes a lot of um, the surroundings, not just the mentality. You know, you can't change things one day and turn around upside down. It takes the time from old tradition to modern days today. That's why, so now, all the galleries, they all came from different, different area. Some of them is a commercial, some of them is art, some of them is all different area. But the most importantly is artist creation is the most important. To understanding artists, so as an artist to understanding galleries is you can't deny. So not just we're talking about a competition. It's not about what future this artist can bring us. So maybe in today's uh, galleries activity in China and maybe in the Western country uh, might be are different. So, so old time the gallery, they only uh, deal with a certain thing. Um, they don't actually much involved with the artists at the understanding the artists' needs. But because we've been through the experience and then also the, uh, been in touch with the Western galleries, we've been contacted and we're learning, educating, so how we can be, um, we can be the same area, we can share the same method, and we can be keep educating ourselves and supporting each other in between artists and the galleries. So, my personal thinking, for me and the artist's relationship, not really we're talking about eight hours of workmanship. It's about how you imagine, how you live with the cultural environment, relationship in today, the artist and the galleries. So, in the artists and galleries, it's not just like it's a commercial gallerist or museum gallerist. It's not about just talking about the commercial side of it. In China, 
In China right now is because we have a tremendous support uh, from old time to uh, at prison. So things are changing, as I mentioned before. And the change is good and bring us the more closer together to understanding each other's needs. So we can be compared with the global other worldwide finest galleries. So for the changes, so able to bring us the out to the global other world, and we can be paralyzed with the world uh, finest gallery. And that relationship to build and keep educating, keep searching, keep looking, and keep contacted with the other galleries, and not just the competitive side, also is from learning side, so much very, very important to us. Because the people, as you know, in China, at uh, galleries today are not professional. Maybe the main reason because they don't have much experience. Let's talk about Zhao Xiaogang. So ever since he's been exposed, exposure to the global market, and there are lots of people, we actually got comments that they're very interesting in Zhang Xiaogang, not just because this person and where they're from, it's about his creative art is very different. Because his he's painting art and the creatives are very much, you can see the difference from before the revolutions and from now. And you will see from a reflection of the old time and the new time. It shows a, a reflection of a society today in China. From my personal thing, the artists and the galleries, the relationship, it become a more crucial, more tight, more teamwork. Let's not just talk about the way you passing see before the galleries and the artists, the art. For today, I think that they close the gap that were the old time. You know, you know, when I was in Beijing, he was in New York. We always contact each other. We're, we keep the, uh, the mutual relationship as we talk and see we can support them mentally. If a gallery and artist is too focused on buying and sell and commercialize, and I don't think you can uh, maintain the relationship is a long way. So I think that that's the same. For artists, the creation, if you maintain no change instead of a more conservative, and sometimes if you can cooperate together, and it's a still, you can't last long. This is not what I just think. This is a, some other friends were actually mentioned to me. So the relationship is a crucial, most important. So for me, actually artists and galleries is not different way to think about the job title because we grow together. It's about quality. It's about creating art. And it's about a galleries that promote the artist. <laughs> so, so you can't, as artists and galleries uh, relationship, you can't just put in the money in the front instead of keep selling, buying. One day, do your pocket going to be run out? What are you going to do? So for the artists, you need to know the direction where you want to go, how we can move forward. And then gallery have to be there 
and the support and to be there for, for the artist, to help the artist to grow together. And there might be more potential side of the artist that may not discover. So it's a gallery how to work together and you do the best performance for the artist. For three exhibition, for me, for four exhibition, it's not just about the old past exhibitions. So when you have a new exhibition, it's a, it, every time you have a new exhibition, it's a challenge for the artist. My first is from a, a New York exhibition, solo exhibition. We'll talk about oh, what kind of exhibition, what kind of art theme we're going to do. But then I had a lot of a hard time because, because when we created something, when you're in the level, then we don't actually think about what markets needs. We is a created the art that I want to public to accept it. So most of the people who come to my exhibition, let's say so most of my arts came from 93s. So I think at that time, most of artists, I think that they must be mindset same as me, very confused. Because are we do something old traditional in the past? Or are we bring something new in, into the artist world? So it's a one of the borderline. We can't stay old, we can't go for new, we won't sure. But is it for the artist? You can't just repeat it all time, all time, repeatedly. And sometimes you have to pay attention for those details, and we can create something new. But at that time, we wasn't sure what we want to create. And it's kind of a big challenge for us as artists. So it's kind of almost isolated for we we get isolated and because we want to do, we're very careful the detail. We don't want to repeat the old uh, timing. And we are locking to ourselves, and we just don't know what to do. That's why the gallerist that they was there and put me in the right track in the right direction. And I think that that's the most important time for me. For them help, I think I move my step more further forward and create something that I never ever even imagined. So when I move my art and exhibition with their help, I can break the ice and then move forward and beyond of my control. So for that experience, after that I work with the PACE, the corporation, it's not about just, just as simple as like you create the painting and then you hand it over to them. It's not just about a wasted what you did. I think that this is a starting of the life of a Ford artist. That's why I create a lots of uh, afterwards, uh, have a lots of solo exhibitions and more paintings, and then uh, create a different type of arts in to show to the public. Let's say example is a Jiang Xin Xigang. His paintings. As according to what the gallerists say, his creation mostly is involved with the words, the character lines. For his series, it shows it's a character 
how to bring into the art piece of work. It shows a culture. For his exhibition, we actually arranged his character into the exhibition to the public and see the lots of collectors and the critics' uh, feedback. In the past, people think about the creating art. It's about the whole package, meaning it's whole backgrounds and the package. But for Jiang Xiaogang, it's a most of a solo. It's not a group work. For individual, for himself, he created his unique of art, the masterpiece, and used by all the character lines. So he's bringing to the new create of art the use by character into the move to the art, and it was quite unique and refresh. And a, of course, it will be challenging for him because not much artist was to think about and using a character and moving into the art, uh, use the um, iron board and uh, some other way to the input the uh, character. So must be say it's a quite challenge and it's a risk by the time. And the, the other way, our gallerist is not an artist. But for we working with together very close to Jiao Xigang, when we choose the artist, we also put a lot of details as to what kind of artist and what kind of art he can bring up and then what kind of art that he will be inspired and he can create a piece of art. But also he also can prom uh, or promising what we can promote his art and will be accepted by the lots of collectors and the gallerists. So for years, years we've been together, we can actually have a lot of experience together, so we know, understand the better. So we're like an old body now. For now and this time, if you have any question to us, please feel free to ask us. I like to be I like to be asked by question and answer. I just don't like to be just talking by myself about me. As you were saying, you're always trying to innovate and create something new. So could you share with us some of your new thoughts and some of your new directions in your work? For the new movement is a little bit confusing for me too. For the time-wise, we cannot even put the words and be logically, because I don't know where I'm going to go in the future, because I, I am, I'm not sure what I'm going to create for next. So it's impossible for the artist to create 1,000 piece or suddenly get inspired and create something. Nobody knows what the future uh, will show. But for me, as I mentioned before, do something in the inspire that I can beyond my control. There's something that I cannot controlable. For me, I'm basically for myself to how to create the art is something that you have to have a touch by every daily life and bring into the life with a surrounded and you can inspire by it. So I would try to create something unique that way to express myself through the, my art and the show the society world. So I try to put myself in a lot of time by myself to educate it, to learning, to look it, to inspect it, to discover, so I can so I can bring the new men mentality into the, my art and to create the new art in the, for the future. So 
Some of the art you might see the repeating. And that could be a my past experience as well, be part of it. So let's, there can be a sculptor. But then, for the sculpture, maybe I, this inspiration maybe came from 10 years ago. Maybe in the way I sculpture, maybe the way that I moved is a different way. And gave me a new, refreshed feel. For the new discovery, this is one of the most confusing part for me. I still do. So we're not just looking at the uh, new things. It's not about a style. If I'm a, like a style artist, I might be painting one particular thing forever. Now, compared to lots of the finest art, for me, I'm still belongs to traditional part of it. I'm a traditional artist. For me, when I was in New York, I looked at the gallerist the exhibition from time over time from over time. I like the modern society, maybe because of what I came from, it was different. So maybe because I got lots of, uh, affected by the old timers, at, at the com combined with the knowledge by the time. And I couldn't say myself I'm a modern artist or I am a contemporary artist or I'm a sculptor or whatever. I am just want to belong to where uh, input it all my old times, new time. Maybe there's a combine. Maybe there's a something different I can talk about it. But as I mentioned before, as I'm an old-fashioned traditional artist, that maybe my inspiration came from the 10 or more years before, but I can input it in a combine with the modern art together. So it's not just creating new piece of art. Maybe it's from the old art. You can also convert it and to change it another totally different style of art. So that's uh, what I'm, I think I, I can answer for you that. That's where I can uh, towards for my future. Um, we have so uh, we, we know uh, Xiao Gang so much about okay, from the beginning or whatever. No, we we're talk. We know to have a uh, lots of questions. I'm, I'm I would like to ask uh, Mr. Lang Lan. I think it's a very strange because when you started, how do you to involve? For th this type of a character, and your, I would like to know how you started as a gallerist. <laughs> well, we mentioned before, I was a research, I was just about a graduation. Then most of my classmate friends are actually are, are artists, and they are actually the writers, the painters, or whatsoever. And then you know, I I actually gave gave them a help to to help them to do the uh, sales, help them to do the exhibition. And then I thought, oh, maybe I should do to the help them, and then maybe I should group together and then have a gallerist representing them to help them to move forward. That's why in the later later down the road. So I need to provide these people to have a consistency, have a place to do exhibition. It's not the, you can't just do the mobile because the place is uh, mobile, they're very big, as you know. So I was uh, at the uh, Beijing path, when I came to the Beijing path, pace, 
then I actually really inspire, amazed by their movement, their working environment. So for the pace Beijing, it gave me a huge impact. It can show that these artists, how they present, and then and then actually you are eliminate lots of unnecessary time and then really focus on the artist, the needs, and the support, things like that. That's why I involved and joined the Pace Beijing. So everything is not just I plan by it. Things that happen in the right time, in the right place for me, and I don't know, I cannot guarantee what's going to change in the future. Uh, every Hi, everybody. And it seems that uh, the greatest influence on you was comes out in your Bloodline series. I would like to know more why this had such a great impact on you. Thank you. This is a big question. I don't know how to answer it. For talking about artists, I've been there for 30 years until today. I think I'm a very lucky artist. Really, it's a, from the bottom of my heart, I call myself, I'm a very lucky artist. For 30 years ago, when I first started, you can see the Chinese uh, changes is dramatically huge. For these uh, 30 years, I've gone through all the different changes, all different stage, from starting from revolution, uh, from 79s, in China, Society is uh, very much control and under for cultural wise for the artist. It was a uh, hard to explore and the free to uh, free to to create because there are lots of a control in between it and lots of a sadness. <coughs> And there are lots of critic. It was uh, lots of hurtful memories. But I was lucky. <coughs> for me, for the, that time, for this, so, but we have a we in that class we have a lots of a fairy and the focus and the sketch. We have a age different wise group. For that time in China, is is all about the involved with the cultural, the meaning behind. So it gave me a strong feedback and memories. For that time in China, it's almost a representative. Is for different type of art. We're not talking about modern or anything. For coming from the modern society, like a farmers and so there are lots of artists are trying to find the reflection of the people and actually from the farmers to modern society to changes and they trying to be uh, reflecting into the art to show and what was the time, old time the China is look like. So they people can feel and those sadness or those inspire everything into the from the paint. So from the beginning, I can say the most of art that you can feel is involved with the revolution, um, most of the changes, and most of the sadness. So as our student at that time, I look at it from the environment. I grew up in the environment. So actually, it's shocking me a lot of old time. That from now on, the way you look at it is totally different. For having that the revolution memory behind, 
because we're there, we're experienced. For me, if I was a kid, for cultural or revolution, I think it's a fun thing. If I were a kid, for me, it's like a, those time of years I should be happy in childhood. But then you actually see the insight about the cultural changes and the revolution that reality is a totally different what you expect. From now, the uh, modern society and compared to the old time, the traditional society is a very awkward, is a, is, is a controversial. So I cannot be too much attracted myself into the old time and the new time because of what I came from and what I've been through, what I experienced through, what I see, the sadness, everything's happening in one time. So my best way I can do is I want to put in what I want to do. That's my first step. And then the second stage is I look at the lots of painting compared to Van Gogh. They most put the point at the personal touch, personal characterism. So when I've been touched with the different artists, and then I get slowly open my eyes, open my heart, and accepted the other cultural uh, world. So after the, the China has been open, from 80s to 82 and the 88. So it's a, for my mentally, it has a big change. And that was the moment I can clearly see myself what I'm going to heading for. It's not just the knowledge that I had to learn from the college and from beginning what I came from. Slowly, after the graduation from university, what I learned from four years in the college, I all dump it behind, and then I received the new modern education, new things. So I finally, I can say, um, I can accept it a new world, not just the where I in my circle of the world. So allow me, keep moving forward, keep changing. Because we're young, you need to have excitement. But you, need, you don't need to do the massive the correction. I think at those times I now I think about it is very valuable for me. Because slowly, because of where I'm getting older, because you see the Chinese changing are massively rapid, you cannot avoid your traditional, your roots, where you come from. Because China in the world is one of a very special country. It's a special place. It's a very lonely place, especially for me. Because there I gone through the big changes. And then to the Australia, and then went to the Theater Museum. It's a one of the most brainwashed stage about the how I look at it, the art. But at the same time, most of a set part too. Before, because you contacted by this element by study, and then a cultural relationship, and then for art, what you're understanding. And so when you get touched by all different elements that time, and from Australia, for my eye seeing, for I complain, and then you went to see the Australia, see what you like to see, the masterpiece. And then you have a, something very sad in, in your heart. When I first time I went to the Van Gogh's Museum, when I came out the door, I was a desperate. I don't know who I am. I don't know where I'm going to go. What am I? I had a desperate moment. Why I should go this, this road? Because he's piece of art gave me a tremendous impact. But in the past, when I read in Van Gogh, I never thought about he's a foreigner. I thought he's a person next to me. But then when I see the Van Gogh's museum, I thought 
Now I found that he's from Holland. And that's strange. It's a strange because he's a yellow with a green eye. And then he died so young. That time I was about 30s. And I said, he's about my, my age. I also liked another Australian the artist. I saw his picture, and he's from 20s. But then his painting shows lots of painful. So it's most like a contemporary type of art. So what I'm trying to under, trying to say is, when I think about the one art, and when I actually been there and see other people's art, gave me a so different impact, and that impact is still there for me. So I think art is the most important is your your mind. Well, I'm not a perfection or um, specialized for the art or special type of art. Um, but then the art have a lot of different steps and the category, in desperate, the happy, and all different category. But I know where I come from. I know what I'm looking for. I know what's the value. So I put it on those input in my mind, and I'm trying to do my best in that area. So that's my second stage. For that time in China. We didn't even have a supermarket. You went to Germany, and then you went to it, it, the world's completely different. So I would love to, I go to a museum, and I go to a supermarket every day. Because you can see that all those different things that I cannot find in China. So it was an excitement moment for me. So when I go to a museum, and you can see the artists is a very, very excitement, but at also same time it was a dead desperate. When you find that you're real Chinese, it's not about who you are. Fango is a Holland, I'm Chinese. But this feeling, it, you can tell by very different. But I think it was a kind of fun. Well, in this between, you can think about more things, more problems. When you start to read or study about art, you might have another corner to look at it. That's how I look at it. It doesn't matter where you're from. I think it doesn't matter where you're born, where you grew up, where you're raised, where you're Western or you're Eastern. I think artists, they share at the same character lines in the create something what you like. Like the Picasso. So when you go to actually academy for four years learning about art, how well you actually adopt learning about what is art, what is the meaning of art? Yeah, I think that this is all surrounded by how we live day by day and what do we have at the custom, what kind of culture we have. That's how my um, art had a foundation start with. Where I come from is most important. Who, I, who am I is most important. Who's my parent is very important. How they live, how people live in our culture is very important. Look at their old picture is very important. If I don't have any knowledge where they come from, where they might, uh, people come from, where the culture come from, I don't think we're, we can create anything. You must understand where you daily by daily to get touched by. And also involved with our history. So when they all group together, then become a, you're truly your own piece. When I get touched in this type of environment, so you can see from this exhibition, you can see one of my painting. You can see the environment. You can see the surrounding. And this is a way. This is a painting that I used to use to be grow up. I familiar with the area. 
For me, you can't create those type of art if you don't know where you come from. And that's where the resources are coming up uh, for the artists creating the piece of art. This is just I mentioned was my past and way where the painting can reflection. I think I'm, I'm sorry we run out of time, but thank you all for coming and I hope you can enjoy the show. Thank you very much.